So I've been doing a lot of portable system reviews lately, and I do have other systems like a PS4 and Xbox One, things like that. I actually have a lot of systems. And But I've been liking the portable thing. I tend to play the portables more. I'd have to say out of the newer generations, the Switch might be one of my favorite systems. For console-wise, I play Xbox 360 probably most of the time. Uh, I still love that system. But with the uh, 7.0 update on the PlayStation 4, they now have remote play to Android devices and iOS. Um, this one here, I'm, I'm actually recording with my iOS or my Android device, but I am going to show, I guess, what I'm getting at is my portable PS4 version. Um, this is going to be on my Wi-Fi, but I do have a cellular in my iPad tablet. But basically, here we go. Let's go back here, and you'll see we have the PS4 Remote Play app here. I'll hit Start. The reason I'm actually kind of doing this is because the DualShock 4 controllers here, they are already capable of hooking up to the iOS 13, I believe I have. They might have did it in 12, but I'm on 13. I'm doing the beta of... Uh, beta of the system, but iOS, or Android is not supposed to do it supposedly until 10. I know people do have them hooked up already, but to be compatible with the PlayStation 4, they're saying until Android 10, which is on very few phones. Um, I'll actually put the information across the screen as it comes up where it talks about like different, uh, different iOS levels and items like that. And while that is still connecting, actually that was great timing of me just randomly talking there for a while. Here we are. We have it here. You'll see I got, got this on. Let's see if I can get the color right. I'm so used to using, uh, I've been actually using my iPad to record my last so many videos. It's actually really, really easy to do. I lose a lot of features in the editing program I use on there, but uh, it is kind of nice. But yeah, so you'll see here, bring that down here, I have everything there and you can see I can go through here we got everything there so let's go into something here we go I might do some cutting ahead and stuff because load times don't change at all just because you're remoting into it that stuff all stays the same so I'll probably do some cutting just because there is some longer intros and things like that and you'll notice my camera actually, I don't ha have it set to manual, it's set to auto, so it's going to, uh, it's going to fluctuate here as you can see. There we go, so we're in the game already. Let's see here, we'll just go to campaign. I'll see if we'll give a little bit of a uh, gameplay on here. June 6, 1944, D-Day. We're invading... I actually don't play uh, campaign on here ever, and it's been a while since I pulled out uh, World War II. So let's see how this goes here. I'm trying to look around the camera right now. I have a bad habit of playing in the camera, and that's never a good idea. So here's part of the cutscene while it's loading. I'm actually pretty impressed with how it looks. I wish my camera could do a better, there we go, better job capturing it. If I could get the... Uh, I just kind of finally got my audio under control. If you've been watching my videos, you know I struggle with that and got the uh, filming somewhat under control. And uh, now because I'm using my iPad to uh, do the remote play, I'm, I'm actually messing with that. Now I could, I don't know how I would do this comfortably. I can play all of this on here. I mean, my fingers, I guess, would reach over there, but I wouldn't want to do that. That would be a lot. Could do it in a pinch, I guess. It is nicer to have the controller though. All right, let's see how bad I suck at this. L3 to sprint, that's pretty standard. No idea where I'm going. A lot of bullets are flying around. Yeah, so it is actually, wow, it's actually, I'm very impressed. I mean, not with my gameplay, of course, but just overall with... Oh, I was trying to, uh, I was trying to melee. Like I said, I'm not that good. But uh, a couple things I noticed. You push this button, it doesn't really do anything. But if you bring up the screen here, and you push the PlayStation button there, that'll bring you back here. And you can go to different things, different settings. 
So there are a couple things, but it's not a big deal. I mean, you're going to have it here anyway, especially if you're playing on, say, your phone or anything. But yeah, you'll see I have full access through here. Here's one thing I'm curious about, video. So we go TV and video. Let's go to YouTube. Added to downloads. Of course, there's always an update. It's one of the reasons why I actually don't play it as much as I should. And I should put it in rest mode so it does do updates. But, you know, it's something about letting the system run all the time kind of bothers me. So now, cannot display current screen from the PS4 using remote play. To display your PS4 home screen, tap the PS button on the control panel, which is down here. So, yeah, it's not going to let video go through. Um, let's see if I still have Plex on here. Not that there should be, not that there should be a difference, but I mean, Plex is actually my system. It's not, but there's still, I guess, technically copyright material on it for the fact that uh, just because they're my discs and stuff, uh, or my recordings off television, they're still not my ownership. So yeah, that's blocked also. So video is blocked on there. But as otherwise, yeah, for gameplay, uh, this is awesome. It's not a portable system, but in a way, for me, it is a portable system. Uh, and if you do it on your phone, it actually, you know, you'll see here you got the, this is a bad image. Let me actually go to something that, see if I can get something. There we go. That's a little darker. So I don't know if you can see all the buttons are all right there, though, but see here. You know, you can move around, down, you can pick things. Um, you're about to launch Prime Video to quickly return while well, okay. I don't think Prime Video is going to work, but there we go. Yep, and it's not going to work. So video, and that makes sense. That's not something I was very surprised by. Uh, that's always seemed to be the case with systems like this. Other than that, uh, that's it. If you don't already have it, I do highly suggest getting it. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know how to... Uh, let me change the lighting here on here. So it's, uh, anyone who doesn't know how to pair this, what you need to do is go to your Bluetooth. So let me get out to go to my Bluetooth. I'm in my uh, Bluetooth settings of my iPad. And you'll see right here, dual shock controller here. So let's just go ahead here. Let's go forget this device. Forget device. There you go. You'll see it's not there anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the share button and the PS button. At the same time, I'm going to hold that down. And then see how it's flashing? And then there it is, so we'll touch it. And there we go, we're connected, and you'll see I got, it's lit up. Um, because of the aperture of my phone, you're not really going to see what color it's lit up as, but it's lighting up red. So that's how you do it real quick. But the first time I did launch all of this, it did ask me to do that. So uh, it wasn't a big deal. But yes, the PS button and share button at the same time, and then make sure you're in your Bluetooth. Other than that, thanks.